A question that comes up from time to time on the mailing list is, how do I manage source code in Quiz? So I thought I'd do a quick video to go through the basics of package management and give you a couple of techniques you might find handy in specific situations. If you're coming from another small talk, you're probably wondering, why do we need another way to manage source code? Change sets via file in and file out are the most universal way to manage source code. If you're not familiar with change sets, they're just a text file format for st storing small talk code that virtually every small talk supports. The problem with change sets is that they start to break down when you need to manage larger projects and you will probably start having issues with their stickiness and end up having changes going to the wrong change set and then having to manually move things around later. They also don't deal with things like dependencies so they're a little too lightweight for our needs. Another approach is Monticello, which is used by Squeak and Faro. At the time Quiz was released, the file format was both too heavy for what was needed and didn't play nicely with widely used version control systems such as Git. So Juan came up with the Quiz package management approach, which is really just a change set with a few features added to turn them into a package file format. So let's take a look at how they work. Now I'm going to use Ometa because it actually uses a few of the features we're going to cover and gives a pretty good example of how they're used in the real world. So let's start out. Uh, I could load up the Ometa package and then load up some of these other packages, but I've already got dependencies set up. So let's go ahead and load the Ometa examples. Actually, do we want tests or examples? Yeah, let's do, yeah, let's do tests. So let's go ahead and install that. And one of the things you probably noticed is it loaded a bunch of stuff uh, because of the way the dependencies are set up. I have the tests package, which in turn requires the examples package. The examples package in turn requires the extensions package. The extensions package in turn requires the Ometa package. And that is our base level package. One of the things that we highly recommend with packages and one of the extensions to uh, change sets is you've got a package description. And please put in at least a basic description. You don't need to go get as extensive as I have here. Uh, but just at least a line or two describing what the package is and what it does. And if you've derived the source code from someplace else, typically like a squeak source repository, just let people know, you know, what was the name of the package it came from and what versions uh, so that they have a pretty good idea of what you've based your code on. Now, the other thing that we can do in the installed packages, this is just the, the package browser, is we can go ahead and browse everything that is in this package, which this is a pretty simple one, doesn't have a ton. And this is actually very handy when you've got more complex packages where maybe you've got, uh, let's see if we've got anything here. Yeah, here's a good example where, okay, we've got the basic package, but then we also have some override methods. And so by using the browse package, you get a browser that just shows you from all across the image, all of the different things that are contained in the package. And it is pretty easy to go ahead and extend a package. So let's go ahead here and Let's go to string. A, a common thing you may want to do is do something like an as meta, and in this case, whatever, we'll just have it return something. So to have this uh, be part of the Ometa package, you just go to more change category and do new and you prefix with a star the package name 
you want it to belong to. And so now, whoops, helps if we get the package name right. So meta2. And you'll notice that as soon as we put it in the right place, we get this little arrow which indicates that this package has unsaved changes. And so if we go and browse, we now see we have a new category show up with our extension method. Now, one word of caution uh, regarding overrides. As you start to either have dependencies on a number of packages from various people in the community who write their own packages, or maybe you end up with five or ten or however many of your own packages, you're going to find that you want to be very careful um, about doing extensions and overrides and just casually throwing them into packages like this. It, it's not a problem if it's one or two or even you know half a dozen and they're very specific uh, to that package, but there are a number of methods that you'll find that uh, two or three different packages may try to override if they're not careful. Uh, so in those cases, what we generally recommend, if you have a common method that you need to override, maybe there's just something missing from it that would be generally useful, try to get those changes uh, submitted back and put into the base image. And if you really need to do a, even a moderate number of overrides, I'd recommend uh, having a separate extensions and or overrides package so you can do it all in one package or maybe split it up into two packages is probably better. Okay so that's using an existing package but let's say we want to we want to go ahead and create a new package and let's call it my stuff and I've Put a couple of things out here. Now one of the things I mentioned about change sets being sticky, the nice thing about Quiz packages is they're, they're anchored. So they'll sit there and they'll wait for you to either dump things into them or pull things out of them. Uh, and they generally stay out of your way. So we've got these classes here. And all we need to do is just change the category to my stuff and you can see now my stuff has changes and we can browse those and of course that's just what we put in there and let's go back to new stuff and let's put this in and browse it again that's fine but maybe we didn't really want this here. Maybe we wanted it in Ometa. And so now we can browse, and there it is in Ometa. But you know what? Now that we think about it, we don't really want it in either of those. We're still working on it. We're not sure we want it in a package at all. So let's put it back in new stuff. And now it's gone. It's not in any package. It's just sitting there in the image. Now, one of the other things, again, you know, uh, demo work. You know, just put something, again, minimally describing what it is that this package is. Okay, so let's get a little fancier here. And let's say we have some extensions we need to do for whatever reason. Oh, let's, let's go back to this. I put a class method on here, and this wants to uh, use a method that doesn't currently exist, global random color, and that is going to be in rectangle like morph. And so let's add it, global color, and what we want this to be is returning a class variable. But the problem is this class variable doesn't exist. 
Now the normal way that uh, people like to do things like add class and instance uh, variables, I generally don't recommend. Other uh, small talkers may disagree with this approach, but this is something I use a, a fair amount. Um, I will directly add the class var name or an instance var name, and that avoids us having to overwrite the entire class because one of the things you can run into is if you save the entire class in your package, well, first of all, all of the changes you make to that class start going into the package, which you typically don't want. But more importantly, even if you avoid that, uh, the other problem you'll run into is if you start adding class and instance variables and then a later update to the QS base image adds its own class or instance variables, your package changes will clobber what's in the base image. So if you do it this way, yeah, let's go ahead and now you can see there's our global random color. So what we can do is add our global random color and have this return global whoops, random color and if it's nil Okay, and so this is easy enough to move over to our package and star my stuff. Okay, so this gets us into the other thing that you want to uh, know about, which is you can have a essentially a package class and let's go ahead and add that it has to be a code package subclass and it will be called the name of the package so it's my stuff package and then on the class side you have the option of having a pre-package install and a post-package install, which as the name suggests, will run either immediately before or e immediately after the package is installed. Now where this comes in handy is on what I just did here. There's no great way uh, to have that picked up by the package. I mean, it's basically a do it and uh, we don't typically have do its in packages, at least not in an easily accessible and editable way. So one of the things you can do is put it in this prepackage install method. And there you go. When you install this package, the first thing it will do is make sure that this uh, class variable exists. Oh, another thing I wanted to show is and the specific reason I overrode uh, or <laughs> enhanced the rectangle like morph is I want to do an override at the same time. And so let's say if nil self class global random color. And this gets us into the second thing. Uh, that you might want to put in a prepackage install uh, method. I've already done this ahead of time, but what you typically want to do, or may want to do, is before the package is installed, make sure that the method you're going to override, in this case, the color, the timestamp on it, is what you think it is. So that way, if the base image has been updated since you've created this package, you uh, don't necessarily want your package to clobber those updates because that, that is a very good way to have your entire image break if you're making assumptions 
about what the state of the base image was and those assumptions are no longer valid so it's better in fact what you might want to do is before you do anything that changes rectangle like morph check and make sure that you know whatever you think are the important things to check that you've done and if you get through your asserts then move on to start doing what you need to do okay what else do i have here that i want to show oh yeah we can easily go ahead and add a dependency and in this case we could say Let's have it be dependent on Ometa. But you could also say, uh, no, let's not do that. Let's go ahead and delete that. And let's have it actually just be dependent on the Ometa 2 tests. And that just adds it to the whole dependency chain. So not only will it be dependent on Ometa 2 tests, but tests in turn will be dependent on examples, which will be dependent on extensions, which will be dependent on Ometa, and it will load the whole chain in. So one final thing I wanted to show, and this is a real world example of using the uh, prepackage install. Ometa is a bit of a complex beast in terms of its uh, requirements. It's got some prerequisites. We actually had a recent change in quiz uh, where there's a preference that will uh, cause the uh, cause Ometa to just absolutely flood transcript. So in the prepackage install, the first thing I do here is check and see has Ometa already been installed. Uh, if it hasn't, then I want to go ahead and set this preference to false so that we don't get these warnings. And then there's a change set, a preload change set that has to come in before the package can come in. So I've got a transcript message uh, just letting you know that it's getting ready to load that. And then it goes ahead and files it in and then a message when it's done. So if anything goes wrong, that gives you a good idea that, you know, find out what this loading Ometa 2 preload was. And, you know, you could do a string search on that and that'll get you back to this method uh, and you'll see what was what it was trying to do. So that's just a, a, an example of um, one of the many ways in which you can do the prepackage install. And likewise, uh, you can have a postpackage install that runs any kind of initialization, configuration, you know, whatever you need your package to do once it's loaded in. Now, the final thing, uh, we also have the ability using this update button. If you've got dependencies and let's say the version changes, um, you can just go ahead and update your dependency version. So, you know, if your your package depends on foo version one and then foo version two comes out and you update your package and you wanna make sure that it, it requires foo version two, that's what the update button does. And that is pretty much it in terms of the basics getting started. Um, most packages you will probably find you do not need the prepackage install or the postpackage install. I uh, just wanted to make you aware because when you get into more complex uh, package dependency configuration situations, uh, these are things that you do need to know about. So anyways, I uh, hope this is helpful and uh, talk to you later.